All right, good morning, everyone. Thank y'all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update on Tuesday, December 8th. Uh, my name is Ashley Edwards, and with me are Jason Holmes, Lee Falk, and Vince Desitel. We're going to kick off our news update today with Lee talking a little bit about our weather and field status here in North Louisiana. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, everyone. Hope, uh, hope everybody's doing good today. As far as uh, field and pasture conditions, cattle conditions up here on the northern end of the state, uh, it's cooled off quite a bit, I think, since the last time we talked. We've had a pretty good stretch of cold weather, I would say. We had our first freeze back several days ago, and it was quite a, uh, quite a freeze at that. Uh, low temperatures dropped anywhere. Lowest I've heard was around 21 degrees. Uh, most everybody was in 25, 26 range. Of course, the farther south you go, uh, I'm sure that temperature increases just a little bit. But it kind of finished off everything. Some some folks has, had had a frost prior to this and uh, and whatnot. But uh, uh, the, the your summer grasses, of course, they're gone. You you've got some some standing forage out there. Folks are still getting some some use out of for the mature cows and whatnot. But pretty much everybody in this part of the world is has gotten into supplementing their cows for sure on hay uh, and, and, and starting their winter supplementation programs. Um, we, we, did, we have gotten some rains off and on uh, over the last course of the week, two weeks, and that has been beneficial and, and has really helped everything. Our ryegrass continues to do good. More and more cattle getting turned out every day on ryegrass, I, I, I would I would say that predominantly we're talking about wean calves, wean yearlings getting turned out on ryegrass. Uh, we're not uh, talking about a whole lot of cows hitting ryegrass yet, uh, but but the ryegrass continues to do good at, as we've been talking about in these new, uh, news updates. Uh, I, I know Jason's going to allude to this a little bit in the market talks uh, later on, but uh, cattle market has has been looking a little better, and that's sure. Uh, kind of helped everybody's moods a little bit. The downside to it, and I know Jason's going to talk about this as well, is feed costs. You know, everybody's got winter supplementation on their mind. They're they're talking about either buying rations or mixing some feeds, mixing some rations up, and uh, had several calls throughout the course of the last week or two. Folks, uh, folks are getting a little bit of sticker shock on either ingredients or rations as a whole. So that's going to be something important. Jason's going to talk. Uh, talk to everybody about here here later. Uh, but uh, other than that, the cold weather has been been the story, I'd say. And uh, people have plenty of hay. So I talked to a guy, and he said, "I know the cattle are needing two or three bales of hay. I'm putting out four or five bales just because I got plenty of hay to feed." And I think that's the story across North Louisiana and maybe other parts of the state as well. That there's plenty of hay out there. People are feeding liberally as far as hay goes. So uh, we're, we're kind of getting to a normal part of winter now with the weather and, and, and the cold and, and everything. But ryegrass is looking good. That's sure a bright spot. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Vince, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you do the same and just give us our update for Central and South Louisiana. Oh, yes, Ashley. Thank you for having me this morning. And so uh... It's always a pleasure, and man, our weather is just—I mean, you couldn't pick hand pick a better day the last couple of days. Uh, but we followed uh, five or six inches of rain, d depending on where you were. Thanksgiving weekend, we had a, a four-day rain event uh, from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so we get we got pretty wet, but uh, fortunately, we were dry going into that rainy spell, and it was it was just a slow, easy rain. So we pretty well dried out in that uh, freeze that Lee alluded to earlier. We got down to. 26, 27, 28. So most of our, our summer grasses as well as, you know, like North Louisiana are, are dinged up and, you know, we heavy into the haystack right now. Uh, but as Lee mentioned, you know, fortunately we had a you know, good hay supply uh, coming off a, a good, good hay year. So, um, you know, producers are predominantly, you know, they feeding and supplementing as well here. So it's, uh, it's pretty good. Rye grass is good. Uh, as we talked about last time we met, uh, we had some Four stands of ryegrass that were planted ahead of Hurricane Laura. These hurricanes just won't go away for us. And, you know, we got 10, 11 inches of rain, so we had some replanting. So that younger ryegrass that was planted following that, that rain event from Hurricane, I'm sorry, not Laura, from Delta, um, you know, that 
freeze we had uh, following that four inch rain uh, really dinged things up on that younger ryegrass. So um, those who waited after the rain, uh, man, that ryegrass really took off. We've got cow calf pears out on ryegrass right now. Uh, we've got yearlings on ryegrass. So uh, those who, who were fortunate enough to get some, some drying time following Hurricane Delta's rains and planted following that, uh, it's, it's really, really, really jam up. Uh, so we're getting some good out of that. So, uh, you know, coming off a, a, a pretty dry summer, uh, we had rain events with the hurricanes, but stuff we could sustain because of the dry conditions ahead of the hurricanes. Um, we, we in a pretty good shape right now. And even though we had a that five to six inch rain, depending on where you, where you were, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, it's dried out and we got wall to wall sunshine right now and, and cattle out grazing ryegrass and produces a supplement with either, you know, hay and tubs and or cubes. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty good situation going into, into mid December. Um, hopefully it stays relatively dry. So we, you know, we don't have all that muddy issue to deal with, uh, as, as we in South Louisiana, we don't have the topography like you do in North Louisiana. So we, we pretty flat. Uh, so we get, you know, big rain event, we get deep mud. So, um, with, with that being said, moving forward, uh, things are looking pretty good at this point, Ashley. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I know Lee and Vince both just kind of talked a little bit about starting to supplement as we go through um, into the winter and this transition period we're in. We've touched on that some the last couple of news updates as well, um, but I'm gonna turn it over to Jason for him to go ahead and go into exactly what these cows or these cattle are needing uh, in terms of supplementation right now and as we go in through the winter. And then Jason, if you want to go ahead and go into the markets after that, you can do that. All right, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I can see my screen, I assume. Yes, sir. All right, so I just got a document up here that uh, I figured it would be easy to put this up there where y'all can, uh, those of you that are uh, that are looking at this online and um, through uh, through recordings later, uh, you can be able to go back and and reference this. It might help you out a little bit in terms of your uh, your decision making. But uh, these are just some um, some basic numbers and calculations that we can use in terms of helping uh, determine uh, what level of supplementation uh, we do need for our for our cow herd. So a couple of bullet points down here, real quick. Supplementation does not mean feeding. They're, those two are totally different. Um, whenever we talk about supplementation, we're taking uh, certain feedstuffs and we're supplementing our base forages. Uh, whether that base forage is stored hay, whether base forage is ryegrass, whatever it may be. So for today's uh, discussion, we're going to be talking about supplementing stored forages or hay. Uh, so we're adding a nutrient that's deficient in the diet. So understand the importance of grazing quality forages and feeding quality hay and correct supplements to cows for optimum performance. So um, like I said a while ago, we're going to talk about hay quality. We're going to look at about three different levels of quality uh, of hay that uh, that I see on a regular basis and what we would need, and need in terms of supplementation for those particular uh, hay qualities. So just to real quick, 1,200 pound cow will consume about 1.8 to 2.5% of her body weight, uh, depending on um, quality of the forage, uh, cow stage of production. Is she lactating in the first 60 to 90 days? Um, is she in late lactation? Is she in early gestation? Is she in mid or late gestation? So what is the, what is the particular production stage that she's in? Uh, type of activities? What are the weather stresses? So one of the things that Dr. Edwards and I were talking about the other day is these uh, these cold nights on some of these Brahmin influence cattle, uh, we do start getting some weather stress on them, some cold stress. So, uh, and that goes back to also those breed differences. I mean, a lot of our Brahmin type cattle, Brahmin influence type cattle don't have a whole lot of hair code on them. Um, uh, so and whenever we're talking about breed differences, Brahmin, Brahmin influence compared to some of those continental and English crosses that do have an adequate uh, hair code on them this time of year. Crude protein is important uh, since protein does contribute in energy and provide amino acids for rumen microbes. So uh, anytime you hear any nutritionist talk, they're going to talk a lot about uh, feeding the rumen microbes uh, because that's where we get the bang for the buck in terms of crude protein. 
more protein that comes from forage, the less supplement is needed. Uh, energy value and intake of forages are more important than crude protein alone. Uh, so in terms of crude protein, about 1.84 pounds in late gestation to three pounds in early lactation of crude protein is required daily for that 1,200 pound cow. If you look on down there in terms of TDN, about 12.9 pounds of TDN and about 17.6 pounds of uh, early lactation TDN is required for that same 1,200 pound cow producing about 20 pounds of milk. Um, so that TDN is directly related to digestible energy. Uh, often calculated based on uh, that acid detergent fiber uh, concentration of those forages that we get off of those forage analysis. So I'm going to keep scrolling down here. So I took three different uh, forage analysis, 8.55% uh, crude protein, 49.5% TDN, 10.8% crude protein, 54.6% TDN, and 11.8% crude protein, 57% TDN. So I just um, um, made all of those equal, 88% dry matter. Uh, some of that's going to fluctuate a little bit on in actuality, but for today's argument, we'll just uh, we'll just normalize those at 88% dry matter. So I've got some uh, uh, some abbreviations up there at the top uh, defined for you, so you'll know as you go through and look at this document, you'll be able to figure out what we're talking about in terms of those those acronyms or abbreviations that we're using. Uh, so the ones that I looked at, the supplement supplements that I looked at, corn gluten feed, soybean hulls, whole cotton seed, rolled corn, cotton seed meal, rice bran, soybean meal, and DDGs or dry distillers grain. Um, uh, all of those are going to be fairly readily accessible. Um, uh, and in terms of what I mean, you, you shouldn't have to drive across three states to be able to, sign, to find those uh, uh, those particular feedstuffs. You should be able to find them within a uh, within a regional proximity of where you're at. So you can see there um, uh, we're talking about in this first one we're talking about beef cows and early lactation. So uh, y'all have heard me say probably before that uh, in that first 60 to 90 days, 60 days especially of lactation, that cow is in her peak energy demands. That's so out of all of her production um, throughout her 365-day uh, year, um, whenever she is in that first 60 days of lactation, um, that is her highest energy demand. So whenever we talk about what we're going to have to have in terms of a, a hay, a Bermuda grass, Bahia grass, Bermuda grass, Bahia grass mixed hay, it's going to be pretty difficult for us to uh, to meet her needs um, in terms of crude protein until we get up to the higher quality uh, Bermuda grass hays. Um, and, and we're going to talk about just Bermuda grass, Bahia grass. That's what these, these uh, analysis are based on. I'm not going to get into any of the annual grasses. But these, are, these are just Bermuda grass, Bahia grass hays. Um, so you can see there on that uh, on that first analysis, 8.55 CP and 49.5% TDN. Uh, we're almost a pound short on crude protein, um, and over five and a half pounds short on TDN. So uh, I'm figuring that at two percent of her body weight, so she's lactating, so her intake is going to be a little bit higher than when she's dry. But because we're talking about a a quality, a forage quality that is below 50% TDN, um, I lowered that body weight intake to 2%. You'll see as we go down these, as quality increases in that hay, um, our body weight in terms of intake, um, our intake based on body weight should go up uh, because the quality of our forages are going up. So I just gave you some suggestions there in terms of um, um, some particular feedstuffs that I put together to help meet those deficiencies uh, in that particular uh, forage analysis. So if we move on down to the next one, 10.8% crude protein, 54.6% 54%, TDN. Um, so we're about 1.4 pounds, 0.14 pounds short on crude protein, uh, and a little over three pounds short on TDN based on 2.2% of our body weight. So TDN is going up a little bit. So our body weight uh, percent uh, uh, intake based on body weight 
uh, should start going up uh, correspondingly. So again, uh, but first one I picked out of there, two pounds of soybean hulls, two pounds of rolled corn. Uh, well, we will by far meet uh, meet those deficiencies with that particular blend of those two commodities. Uh, two pounds of whole cotton seed, two pounds of um, um, rolled corn. That's uh, that's supposed to be RC and not GC. Sorry about that. Um, and then the last one took three pounds of DDGs and one pound of soybean holes. So uh, you can see there that our crude protein we're getting a little bit a uh, little bit high on crude protein. So we're wasting a little bit of crude protein as we move up into those different diets there. So then as we go down to um, the 11.8% crude protein, 57% TDN. So um, that 11.8% crude protein on a Bermuda grass hay is not too hard to achieve, uh, but that 57% TDN, guys, you've got to be uh, dotting your I's and crossing your T's to get to a 57% TDN on, on those Bermuda grass hays. And it can be done. Uh, it's just getting a little bit more difficult to be able to achieve that. You got to pay really close attention to your uh, to your maturity, how often you're cutting that forage in order to to get to that point. But it can. I'm not saying it can't be achieved. It, you just got to you got to be a really good intense manager to make that happen. Uh, so based on that one, we're looking at about one pound of either soybean hulls, rice bran, or rolled corn in order to meet the uh, the deficiencies. Uh, but uh, uh, so we're good on crude protein. So all we're trying to do is get a little bit of energy into them in terms of about a half a pound of energy or TDN. Um, so you can see there what uh, uh, the three commodities that I looked at using to be able to offset that. So that's early lactation. So now let's look at late gestation. So those energy demands are not near as high as where they are in terms of uh, those lactating cows. So that first one up there, that's our lowest quality forage at 8.55 and 49 and a half. Uh, so you can see that we're good on crude protein for those late, late gestating cows, uh, but we're about 2.2 pounds short on TDN or energy based on that 1.8% 1 of our body weight. So I looked at two and a half pounds of rolled corn or three pounds of soybean hulls, and, uh, and we have um, we've met the supplementation needs of that particular forage. So then as we go into the, the medium or higher type or higher quality forages, we can see that, uh, that we are meeting her nutritional uh, demands with either a medium quality or a high quality uh, Bermuda grass hay. Uh, so we don't, have to, we don't have to put any other supplementation out there in front of them. Um, uh, we uh, we we know that we can we can make that happen, and I'm not for sure. Actually, I'll put it in the uh, description, but I think I got a typo right there under uh, deficiencies. That shouldn't be there, uh, but I'll I'll type you up something. We can put it in the description of the the video to help uh, help correct that one right there. I apologize about that. Doing it in a hurry, um, but hopefully that'll just give you a good idea of. Um, of what we're talking about in terms of uh, paying attention to forage quality, whatever that forage is, whether it's a storage forage or, uh, or rye grasses, uh, and what the cow's needs are. So if you go back to that very first one, and y'all, if you ever want to uh, talk about uh, uh, looking at pounds of crude protein and pounds of TDN instead of, instead of just looking at it in terms of percentages, uh, give me a call and I'll be glad to help you walk you uh, or walk you through that to uh, to help you figure that out. But um, and I think it's important to to understand, number one, what your base forage is, uh, understand what the quality of that forage is. A lot of time uh, on dry cows, we don't need to be adding any more crude protein into the diet. Uh, we're just uh, normally going to be deficient on a little bit of TDN. Uh, but when we get into those lactating cows, for all those guys that are out there with fall calvers that have got cows lactating right now, um, pay close attention to, um, uh, to body condition scores. Uh, don't let them start slipping this time of year. Um, and if you, uh, if you want any type of forage sampling done, if you want to get an idea of what your base forages are, give me, give Lee, give Dr. Edwards a call. Uh, a call and um, um, and we'll we'll be sure and get you fixed up.
All right, thank you. I'll let you go ahead and swap your screen over if you want to for the market reports. I won't share my screen on this one. We'll, uh, uh, we'll just move right on into it. So uh, for the uh, markets weekend in December the 4th, um, live and feeder cattle, uh, definitely feeling the pressure of low, uh, lower box beef prices. Uh, so compared to uh, November 30th, uh, the choice cutout has lost $10.48 a hundred weight and the select cutout has lost $9.64 a hundred weight. So um that's uh that's definitely making uh, uh making some of our live and feeders um uh, suppressing those prices a little bit uh latest winter wheat conditions report showed 22 to 50 percent good across texas oklahoma and kansas uh fair conditions followed closely behind good conditions so um and if you'll listen just a minute we're talking about those those five to six weights uh, really good, uh, really good wheat grazers. Um, if we can keep those wheat conditions, those winter wheat conditions, and that uh, around that 50% good across that uh, that three state area, um, fair conditions close behind. I think it'll continue to to fare well for those uh, those really good uh, hard type um, grazers. In the five area feeding region, Fed steer negotiated cash sales closed the week at 106 to 112, which is steady from a week ago. Uh, most recent quotes uh, show February futures were trading down 55 cents at 111.85. And when we start talking about these futures, this is where those, uh, those the pressure from those box beef uh, values are gonna come into play. Uh, most, uh, most reads in April, Quote down 40 cents at 115.77 and June down 32 cents at 110.72. Uh, five to 600 pound steers sold between 140 and 159. So that's two to four dollars higher than a week ago. Uh, so really good on those five and six weights. Uh, seven to 800 pound feeder steers sold 126 to 138. Uh, so those were steady to about five dollars lower than the previous week. Uh, January futures uh, trading down $1.12 at 138.65, March down 90 cents at 138.52, and April down 65 cents at 140.12. Uh, lean coal cows remain steady from the previous week at 40 to 47 cents a pound. And then looking at the feedstuffs, uh, Lee alluded to this a while ago, uh, kind of a mixed bag, but uh, in, uh, I'll just throw out soybean meal to start off the bat. So soybean meal is down $4.80 at 409.50 a ton. It's down, but we're still $100 a ton higher than where we were last year. So I think that's what we got to keep in mind here is, is some of these, I might say that they're down, but uh, whenever you compare, uh, compare those prices to 2019 prices, we understand why some of these feedstuffs are are wreaking havoc on these guys that are trying to locate these these uh, these commodities. Soybean hulls are steady at 125 a ton. Corn gluten feed is up twenty dollars a ton at 625. DDGs up twenty dollars at 212.50. Uh, rice bran is steady at 125. Cotton seed meal is up 17.50 at 420 dollars a ton. Whole cotton seed is steady at 260 dollars a ton. Corn is down seven cents at four dollars and thirty-four cents a bushel. And that's all I got, Ashley. All right, thank you. Um, so just to wrap up today, um, we do have our monthly webinar. Um, so again, these are our live events. So this is Tuesday, December 8th. Um, hopefully you're watching this before the webinar starts so you can jump on. Uh, so we will be live at 10.30 a.m. We will have Jason as well as Mr. Boo Persica, who is our um, manager at the Meat Science uh, Laboratory there at LSU. They are going to be presenting our Beef for the Holidays webinar. Um, if you're not able to join us at 10.30 or if you're seeing this after the event, we will have it posted online. Um, I usually get it up by Friday. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. We've got some videos that we have from the Meat Science Lab there. Uh, with Boo going through carcass breakdown and some different cuts and things that you might want to cook 
um, over Christmas and New Year's and then on into the spring. So uh, very excited about that. And with that, I think that's all we have. Um, so thank you all for joining us. And we will be back with you in a couple of weeks.